Good afternoon, everybody. And good afternoon, Natasha. Hi. I don't know about you. Hi there. I don't know about you, but I wish I could have opted out for some of the roommates that I had over the years. I love that commercial. Um, so before I introduce Natasha, I really enjoyed the last session about social media. Um, you know, speaking of social, this is a great opportunity today to post content from today's session. And remember that the today's winner gets an Apple Watch, so make sure that you're posting throughout the day as you see or hear fun things. Uh, to introduce myself, my name is Mindy Himmel, and I'm the Vice President of the Influence Sales at Apartment List. This is my fourth Spark, my first virtual Spark. And I'm doubly excited today because not only do I get to speak about virtual culture, but I also get to talk to someone at Taco Bell. So it's a double win for me. So here in Southern California, where the Taco Bell headquarters is located, I've heard wonderful things about the culture of Taco Bell uh, pre-pandemic as well as post-pandemic. And we're so lucky to have an opportunity to speak with Natasha Gafoglio, who's largely responsible for this cultural success. So Natasha is uh, part of the employee communications and engagement team at Taco Bell Corporate. She leads the global employee communication and engagement at Taco Bell headquarters in Irvine. And for more than a decade, she's been driving business objectives and culture through inventive storytelling, channels and enriching engagement programs. She's constantly coming up with ways to break through the noise and stay relevant by designing experiences and communication carefully crafted to deliver an on-brand experience. From the team members who cook and serve Taco Bell's craveable food and restaurants, to corporate employees, to the 300 plus franchise organizations that own and operate Taco Bell restaurants, Natasha's team is passionate about meeting all of their stakeholders where they're at to make their jobs easier, fun, and unique. So without further ado, to kick us off today, uh, my first question for Natasha is, what is your favorite Taco Bell menu item? I imagine this is something you might've been asked before. <laughs> Once or twice. Um, yeah, so I love the good old fancy, oh, good old fancy, good old fashioned crunchy taco. I prefer chicken instead of beef at jalapeno. I love it. And has that changed over time or has it always been a, your go to favorite? You know, that's always my go to favorite. Of course, every time we launch something new, we're out there trying it. But I continue to gravitate towards. The good old crunchy taco. I love it. That's fantastic. Well, I know when I shared with our team that you'd be joining us today, they were fired up and, and had their own favorites to share. So without further ado, I would love for you to talk to us a little bit about the culture at Taco Bell pre-pandemic. Yeah. So there's, um, like you said, our headquarters is here in Orange County, California. Five-story building on any given day, five, six, seven hundred people all in one building. And the place was just constantly a buzz with energy. You walk through the hallways and there's monitors, videos playing, pictures of employees. We have visitors, guests, all kinds of things going on. And we took a lot of pride in celebrating Small, what we call small days. So whether it's a new product launch or maybe it's National Popcorn Day, who knows? Uh, there was constantly something happening. So it was just a very energetic place to be. You fueled off of that energy. Everybody was there together, very in-person culture, right? Um, and just a lot of fun, a lot of creativity booming constantly. And so as you've evolved to a virtual environment, I know that at Apartment List, we also had a tremendous in-office culture. And that kind of came to a screeching halt along with what I presume happened at Taco Bell. So I'd love to hear how you've made that transition and what virtual culture looks like now at Taco Bell. Yeah, so we pivoted very quickly, uh, literally overnight we decided, hey, we're gonna try working from home because we're not sure what's gonna happen with this pandemic. At that time, we weren't using the word pandemic yet. And um, we never, I mean, it's been a year, right? And we've really hardly been back. So we very quickly 
um, take everything that we did in person and do it virtually. And that is kind of difficult when you are depending on physical space to celebrate those things, right? Um, so one thing that we knew that we wanted to do was entertain people, right? Um, that are, this is a big part of our culture, right? Making sure that employees are happy. And when you walk around the office, right, it's always very entertaining. And um, one of the things that we did, this was actually late last year, is we had this event called Put a Quirk in It. And that's one of the visuals that you're looking at right now. And the idea here was like, you know, we've been in the pandemic for, for many, many months and we've done it all. I mean, it probably a lot of um, similar things other companies have done. We did virtual hangouts, you know, virtual gym classes, um, all kinds of things. And by the time we got to the end of the year, we were all ready for it to be over and done with. We wanted to celebrate all the hard work we had done in 2020, but at the same time, we were ready to put a cork in it. So we had an event called Put a Cork in It. And the idea was like, let's just let's just celebrate, but also say goodbye, never come back again, 2020. And we made all of our executives dress up in holiday onesies and they read us um, a spoof on Twas the Night Before Christmas. And um, we actually, there's another visual that we'll, we'll pull up here in a second. Um, we had it hosted by Tony the Angry Holiday Elf, and we hired a comedian, and we just really wanted to entertain people. Sit back, relax, we'll give you an end of year show. It was only an hour, so it didn't take up a, lot, uh, you know, a big part of your day. And um, you know, I think it was just a really good example of kind of the culmination of everything that we had turned into virtual culture um, as a way to just say, hey, 2020, put a cork in it. Um, and it, it ended up being a very entertaining experience. This is awesome. So is that Tony in the center? Um, Tony's on, on a different slide. Um, no, the guy in the center is our chief operating officer. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, these are our chief executives right here, and they were super sports about it because you know we we all felt you know what it's we just want to give our our employees a, a show right we want to entertain them we can't get together live and hire a band mm -hmm. um, so we did the next best thing. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, and I love that you brought visuals. Um, there's Tony. so this oh there's Tony. Hey Tony, so. You mentioned that this was later in 2020, so you had kind of gotten your virtual vibe going and you knew how to bring people together and have lots of fun. Would love to hear if there were any early missteps that you experienced or learned from. Absolutely. Um, so at the beginning of the pandemic, so many industries were disrupted, of course, um, and food service industry was no exception to that. And we were lucky in that we had drive through so we were able to stay open and continue to serve customers, but we had to change so many things. We have about 7,000 restaurants across the country. So we were just in crisis mode 24 seven for weeks. And there was so much going on that we overemphasized just getting information out to employees, you know, calls that used to be uh, once a quarter became weekly and just just constant information and the the tone was very somber because at the time we really had no idea what was what was going to happen right um so we were all kind of exactly. feeling it personally we're feeling it professionally and i think that was the misstep is forgetting to have even an inkling of fun or hope any ray of sunshine that we could infuse into the culture you know our, our calls um were pretty serious and finally one day we realized we need to start like bringing some some hope and some cheer um and that's what we did we started with something called feel good fridays where we just cobbled together whatever video we could whether it was just still shots that we took from our, our restaurants or something funny somebody did to entertain their kids at home started with feel good Fridays and then we took it from there. But, but early on it was, um, we completely missed the fact that people are looking to their employers for, <laughs> for some sort of hope or, you know, uh, enjoyment. and entertainment and fun. Exactly. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. Um, so 
obviously as the virtual environment has evolved and you've gotten more comfortable in this space, do you have any examples of a time when Taco Bell really influenced or drove new thinking and innovation around their team and what that virtual environment I, looks like? Yeah, I, I do. So we launched a few months ago something called the Internal Incubator. And the idea here, um, our CEO, Mark, was very passionate about um ideas, good ideas come from everywhere. It really doesn't matter if you are in the marketing department or if it, it creativity, so to speak, is part of your role. Good ideas on any given topic can come from all over the organization. And we wanted to bring a program like this to life pre-pandemic. Um, so obviously all our resources and everything shifted to managing the crisis, but a few months into the pandemic, we thought, hey, are we going to do this program or not? We thought, no, we need to wait until we all get back to the office and we're in person. And then we realized, you know what? We've come this far all virtual. Like we can do this. Mm -hmm. So we um, we put together what we eventually named the internal incubator. And the idea is pretty simple. Um, you only have to be a Taco Bell employee. That's the only qualification to be part of it. Doesn't matter your role, your department, um, your level. And um, we will train you on the creative thinking process. We hired an outside person to come in and help us. You go through that process and then we all um, go after a business challenge, applying those um, creative thinking concepts. And the first challenge we went after was how do we continue to keep our culture thriving in a virtual world? Um, and it was actually great. Um, we had, as you can see here, you know, everybody was just on Zoom, but our facilitator did an amazing job, you know, getting that those interactions out of people. Um, and we came up with, so we had 60 participants. It was, this was the pilot program and we came up with almost 70 ideas and they were really good ideas. And we had everybody from across, from across the company. So um, it was just a really good way to harness like that, your employees creativity. And we did it completely virtual. It was very successful. And we're actually going to do a phase two in a few weeks with a completely separate challenge. So um, it, it was just really, really great to be able to, you know, see everybody's creativity come to life, you know, in unexpected ways. Yeah, so the objective there, if I'm understanding correctly, is to essentially provide every employee the opportunity to solve a business challenge that you have in this incubator environment. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. And the beauty of it is you can be solving a challenge that otherwise would never cross paths with your, your role, right? Say you're in finance, you could be solving mm -hmm. a challenge around um, you know, how to like the next value product, right? I mean, it's it's kind of right. cool that it crosses like that yeah and i think what i really loved about what you said is that you were thinking well maybe we should wait until we're back in person but then you said you know what the heck we might as well do it now this is our reality now and we might as well attack it so i love that you were willing to go out and take the risk and it sounds like it was it's been a successful endeavor so far that's awesome so, press again. so changing gears a little bit yeah exactly fingers crossed so changing gears a little bit, uh, remote employees uh, at, at times can be efficient and productive as they would be in the office. Um, but we also know that on the contrary, working remotely can be a challenge for some folks. Um, there's distractions like chores or children or roommates or social media and things like that. Would love to understand how Taco Bell has tried to strike that balance between ensuring their employees are engaged, but also productive and successful. Yeah. Well, one of the first things we did, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, is we have to embrace the distractions at home, right? Especially this is before school started to reopen, you know, um, we have to embrace it. So when kids and pets and everybody runs in the frame and you hear, you know, a, a your kid having a tantrum in the background, like mm -hmm. that kind of becomes part of the meeting, right? So we had to, we had to embrace that. And as soon as we gave people the permission, to embrace things like that, you know, you take the pressure off of employees to have to um, deal with that that struggle of being at home and everybody being in the house and our lives being completely disrupted. Right. So that was the, the first thing. And then I think that the second thing was um, 
you know, like I mentioned earlier, like the food service industry, we had to just change so many things so quickly that we were just busy. We almost didn't really have a choice um, about being engaged. Um, but but the beauty there was it was we were all we're all in this together. We're going to figure this out. We're going to uh, make all the changes to our business that we can to make sure our restaurants can continue serving our customers. So, um, you know, just kind of embrace the madness, if you will. Um, that was really sure. kind of the simple but, but uh, effective way to uh, to keep everybody engaged, quite honestly. Yeah, and I we can absolutely relate to that. I know when there's a lot to be done, it keeps it keeps everybody in, uh, engaged by default, right? Uh, but tagging on to that, I know that we we often want to ensure that our team isn't feeling burnout or um, not appreciated, particularly in a remote environment where we don't have the same flexibility that we did in person. So I'm sure that your employees, uh, as all, want to feel appreciated and valued. So would love to understand how you're really demonstrating that value and appreciation to your employees in, in this in this environment, and also making sure they feel heard and 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 valued along the way. Yeah, no, that's a great question, Mindy. Um, so. The answer to this question, I actually have a, an example of a program um, that we call Seasoned for Growth. And it's not a program that was born out of the pandemic. It's a program that Taco Bell had um, for a few years prior. We did it once a year. The idea here is um, we want employees to have development opportunities, career building opportunities, or just personal enrichment opportunities. Um, and so um, in previous years, we would we would choose a month or two and we would pack all of these courses um, into into that time period and employees could just voluntarily, you know, take any course that they wanted. And it was all done in person. And it was kind of a pain in a way because we had to depend so heavily on the conference rooms. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, right? Sometimes Absolutely. your whole meeting depended on whether or not you could find that conference room that could accommodate, you know, the say 40 people who want to take this this class. So um, fast forward to 2020, um, we knew that employees were hungry for that development again and um, we got requests from people like, hey, you know, I really need help relaxing because I'm so anxious. Wouldn't it be nice to do like some breathing or meditation e exercises, right? So so we took all of that and we said, what are we, what are we gonna do this year? And we said, we're gonna do season for growth, but we're gonna um, make it all year long. We're not just gonna try and condense it into, you know, those those two months. And we're gonna make it fun. We're going to choose a theme. And as you can see from this visual right here, we chose classes and session. And those are some of our executives who we assigned, you know, a subject to teach kind of based on, on their role, like Mark King's or you know, we um, just themed it out. So it's fun. But um, behind all of this is a lot of different opportunities for employees to, um, to to get to get courses and enrichment and development based on what they want. So, if I really want to learn about um, you know negotiating skills, there's you know there's a class for that. If I just want to learn how to meditate, there's a class for that. And we source our own people to to help teach these classes as well. Our executives host them um, as well. So, this is just a great way. And we, you know we took a lot of employee. Um, uh, requests in terms of what type of courses they wanted. So they felt heard, they feel engaged. Oh, and by the way, Mindy, these are so much easier to schedule because we don't have to worry about <laughs> conference anymore. I mean, it's just, um, so we just finished up our first semester, uh, so to speak, and we're heading in, into our second one now. So it's a lot of fun. That's wonderful. And I'm curious, actually, have you had more or less or the same level of engagement from your team when it's when the, it's more accessible in a remote environment great question um we've had more because it's just so much easier right um and we want it and that's another reason why we, we spaced it out um so that way there's one we target like one class a week so it feels manageable because we all have our day jobs we have to get through um but it's uh yeah i would say overall um a definite increase in participation and we're able to um include our our employees who work you know field-based roles right because it's virtual now so that's been another nice um a nice piece of this too 
Wonderful. It definitely expands your audience. And I love these pictures. <laughs> so it, if you were going to give some advice, um, the folks here that are, that are joining us all have teams where they're trying to create engagement um, across their, their company and their teams, whether they're um, folks that work in the corporate office or, or out in the field at our communities or at their communities, as you were describing some of the folks in your store locations. What, what's one piece of advice that you would give to them um, or anyone who's trying to foster a solid virtual work culture? Yeah, I think that the first thing and that this worked for us was um, make things kind of bite size, if you will, like, um, you know, the last thing you want is for, you know, we all have heard that term like mandatory fun, right? We don't want our employees to feel mm -hmm. pressured or forced into, you know, something that feels artificial. So, so things that are small, even if it's just like a 15 minute, you know, virtual happy hour, um, I think the maximum we ever bring our employees together virtually is, is for an hour. Um, so keep, keep it manageable and then entertainment and fun. Like that's really what drives, uh, that's really what drives our culture at Taco Bell. You know, we mm -hmm. want to surprise and delight employees. We want them to feel special. So going back to that, put a cork in it, um, event, we, you know, we hired a, a comedian because we thought, let's just make people laugh. Um, you know, how, you know, how can we tap into our own employees creativity to spice things up and just just entertain. Um, I, I think that goes a long way and it sounds kind of silly and it's not something you typically hear um, when we talk about employee engagement or communication, but I think it's really important. We work really hard and you know our, our teams deserve that. So well and I have a follow-up question because I think it's really interesting that you mentioned that you don't typically go more than an hour with a virtual event. Is that something that you landed on after some trial and error or has that been a rule that was in place prior to to our new normal you know i would love to say that we came together and like scientifically decided this is the sweet spot never more than an hour but honestly um mm -hmm. it just it just it just kind of turned out that way um we knew and you know you can watch numbers on on your events and so you know, mm -hmm. if you're going, if you're creeping over an hour, you know, everybody starts dropping off because they probably have that next meeting they need to get to. So that's why we 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 keep it to an hour um, uh, or under. Yeah, I think that's a great rule of thumb, whether it was established scientifically or not. And, and I think I'll take that away for sure today. Um, and then would love to hear if you have a favorite memory or event that um, that you've all hosted or um, put on for your team over the course of the last, gosh, over a year now? Yeah. So um, kind of going back to um, my my point about that entertainment factor for, for your employees. Uh -huh. um, we, so we had a week, it was early, actually earlier this year, we had broken some, some records and we wanted to celebrate. Um, and our, our physical building in Orange County kind of lends itself to like huge drive through events. And so okay. we thought, okay, let's like have everybody come out if they want to um, and kind of do a big drive through event. You can grab a bagel, right? Let's, let's reward people with bagels. Sounds good. And so we, right, we were planning that and we thought, well, you know what, like a bagel in and of itself isn't super exciting. What can we add <laughs> to the mix? As people are driving by to surprise and delight them. And what you're looking at now this is, amazing. Is, is a llama. Um, and we named it the Bagel <laughs> Llama event. And it seems kind of random and it was very unexpected. But <laughs> everybody who drove by, you know, a lot, a lot of times people had kids in the car and the kids loved it. And it was very random. And there's no, you know, natural tie between bagels and llamas. But we made it work because, you know, why not? Right? Like, let's make it, let's make it fun. Um, so the Bagel Llama event is really kind of one of one of my favorites and speaks to just kind of the quirky, fun nature of Taco Bell. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, I think that there could now be a connection between bagels and llamas. I think it could be like the new <laughs> chocolate and peanut butter. I mean, I think you've started something here. And I'm into it. Uh, bagels and llamas, you can't go wrong. <laughs> 
Um, and before we wrap, I just have one more one one more question for you. So, you know, on the we've talked about all the fun and all the excitement and creating surprise and delight, which is which is so critical. Um, how do you keep your employees emotionally invested in your business's success um, when they're not close to it physically? Yeah, um, this this is where um, you have to really strike the right balance of sharing out information. So I talked about you know early in the pandemic, right? It was just constant, like, hey, here's here's five hundred things that we you know are, are doing today, and then five hundred things that we're doing tomorrow, um, and then you don't want to go silent. On employees either so there's there's a right mix right um or a good balance in between where you're mm -hmm. updating employees on the health of the business um at, at a cadence that makes sense doesn't feel overwhelming um but then also making sure um that they just feel heard along the way right so there's the business piece of it making sure everybody's in the know and feels good about the you know Sure. the direction of the brand but we're also still dealing with a lot of change right we are not back in the office um, we are planning for what that looks like and we are constantly pulsing our employees and staying engaged with them um, to make sure that their voices are heard as we make those plans and then just um the empathy piece right like it, we, we are all kind of going through our own things and our own struggles right schools are reopening but some parents have a kid in school tuesday thursday other parents have their other kid wednesday third it's just like it's kind of crazy and just making sure everybody you know feels like it's all okay things are a little, still a little chaotic and it's fine we're all going to get through it together so those would be the three pieces i think are, are the key to keeping people just engaged and um you know hopefully happy, happy in their roles. Well, this has been a fantastic um, session for me. I know I've learned a lot and I think my takeaways from you are really su surprise and delight and, you know, entertain that our employees make sure they're having fun. Um, second of all, have empathy. And, and third of all, you know, go with the flow. We are all still um, evolving and changing and responding to a super dynamic environment. And uh, we, have to be, we have to be nimble. So thank you so much, Natasha, for your time today. We've loved having you. And um, we'll see you all at the next session. Thanks so much.